G'day, it's David Seymour with some more nitty gritty of selling and the subject today is targeted prospecting. So let's look at targeted prospecting. It's the way to go out and actually get the business that you really want to get. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, you can, you can do this. Um, basically I'm talking mainly about real estate today, but you can transform this into anything, any industry. It's pretty easy. So I'll just take you back to my um, insurance days. What I wanted to do was increase my portfolios. Um, and so what I would do is talk to my existing clients and find out who the bigger clients in the area were. Because I used to predominantly do farm insurance or rural insurance packages. And so I'd find out who the who the real big players were, and if I didn't have them insured, uh, I would actually go and introduce myself and talk to them about how I can help them and you know what the company does and all those sort of things. Now, there's no, or very rarely is there any instant gratification in the way of um, sales when you're in the sales business, it takes time. What you do today can affect your business three or four, even six, maybe even 12 months down the track. So. It's important that you keep this prospecting going. It's not something that you can do today and expect to get uh, instant result. Sometimes you get lucky and you do, but sometimes it takes a bit of time and more often than not. So you've got to understand this, that targeted prospecting is, is lining up or filling up your pipeline for future business. When I was at uh, Sunshine Homes for six years, the first nine months that I was there, I was negotiating with Housing New Zealand about supplying them transportable homes uh, for the um, Kamatua housing scheme. It took nine months to get the first contract and then after that the next five years I sold them 45 houses but it was a real targeted approach it was them that I wanted to get and it was a good uh, additional bit of business to the um, sales agency and that rolled over into when I was in real estate with LJ Hooker and Whangarei is not only did I sell Housing New Zealand a number of other houses um, that, went, that they were looking for in the district but also uh, I sold more property for them and you know over that whole um, probably eight or nine years that I did business with Housing New Zealand it was probably worth close to half a million dollars worth of commissions to me so it was important to keep that relationship going. Now targeted prospecting in real estate is really easy. There's um, several things that you can do. <clears throat> Maybe you're working with a buyer who wants to live in a certain street in a certain suburb, but there's nothing, he's, you know, it, there's nothing available right now. Well, why not drive down the street with that buyer and say, which one of these houses would you like to buy if it was for sale? And he'd go, that one or that one is the ones I would like. They would be awesome. So why not go off and do your homework, find out who the owners are, we all know how to do that in the industry, and then actually go and introduce yourself to them and tell them that you have a buyer who would be interested in their property. Now, it doesn't always work. Sometimes they just tell you to fuck off, they're not interested in selling. That's fine, but hey, you know, if you do it often enough, now and again, you get lucky and then the buyer or the seller might just go well if I was going to sell I'd want a million bucks and you go well as it happens my buyers in that price range why don't we go through the process and you know maybe a week or two weeks down the track boom you've got yourself a deal because you were brave enough to go and knock on that targeted property now I've done it it works it's not something you're necessarily going to do every week or every month but it does work and it's a numbers game and that's what selling is all about it's about numbers if you're checking trade me if you're monitoring trade me or real, um, uh, real estate.co you might see houses come up on the market which or have been on the market for a while well why not why not introduce yourself and talk to them because I'll tell you what if the agent who has them currently um, is not doing his job after three months or so those vendors are going to be looking for a new um, salesperson, so why not be in there? Now, I used to drop in letters. I had dropped letters like this, and it says, um, do I want to um, get sold? Or, and, and on the back, I would have an advert 
um, about myself a promotional advert. And this, this would be, be saying something along the lines of, I see you've had your property on the market for a while. Um, how's that experience been for you? And then I'll just go on about using an a, a agent with a track record and so forth. But you can mould that round to whatever your situation is and your experience. And the thing is then you follow up. You have to follow up again. You can't just do it once. If you just make one phone call or one email or one letter, chances are you're not going to get anywhere. But if you do it, you send the letter, you maybe follow up with a phone call or a personal visit, and again, maybe once you've had that personal visit, a thank you card, all these sort of things, stay in touch, ask them how it's going, ask them how it's going, ask them how it's going. Have they got any concerns about the market that you could help them with? And it's not about necessarily asking for the business, it's just about becoming um, the person they actually learn to um, trust because the information you're giving them is quite good and maybe their salesperson is not doing their job. Uh, the other letter I had was a, a title, same thing, big bold title, um, not sold yet. And I used to use that with the private sellers. And again, I just talk about, yeah, selling property is never easy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm not going to intrude on your um, privacy, but I would like to offer you some help. Maybe you could give me a call and we can talk about how we can get your property sold and those sort of things. And here's another little thing that I had way back, um, private seller's guide um, for selling real estate privately. And in that was a whole lot of information about things they need to look at from first impressions to the legal side of the sale and purchase agreement and everything in between. Yet you go, why would you give them all this information? It's because it scares the fuck out of them. So they want to actually um, give up selling it themselves and use you as the agent. So targeted prospecting can be so rewarding. If you see a property that you'd like to, to sell, why not make contact with them? See where they are? You never know. But the thing is you're going to need to follow up with them, with the three Fs that are involved here, and it's follow up, follow through, and follow back. Do those things and you will reap the rewards eventually. As I said before, selling is, an, an, is not an instant gratification process. It's about filling your pipeline with business. But if you're targeting, um, target prospecting, well then the thing is that you're filling your pipeline with business that you wanna do as well. It's, it's a really good way of going through the process of just filling it all up and making it um, work for you. But the thing is, you've got to start. You have to start doing it, and then you have to just keep being consistent with that prospecting, and then and just keep going. Even sometimes when you think there's nothing happening here, keep going, because good things will come. It just takes time. You just got to keep be positive with it. And when you're talking to people, um, your future clients be positive with it. So this target prospecting can be related to any type of business. I've just talked mainly about real estate because that was um, my forte. But if you think about car yards, for example, you know that Johnny Plummer buys a new ute every year from the dealership across the road. Well, why not tell him about the latest model? Phone him up and ask him if he'd like a demo. If you do a certain sort of maintenance work, maybe you do gardening or maybe you do lawn mowing or whatever it is and you see a house that um, could really do with some work, go and have a chat to them. Don't be afraid because the thing is that once you go and have a chat to them, tell them how good you are and what you do, what your rates are and how you can do it, yada, 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 do all those sort of things. And then if you get the business, keep going back, don't you? It's just putting business on your books. So this target prospecting can be very, very rewarding. But as I've said, you just need to make sure that you do those follow-ups and follow through and follow back. It's, it's the most important part. And here's an example of what I mean. I was talking to my brother this morning. He put a section for sale privately on Trade Me six months ago. He's in the Green Height area. Now I asked him how many salespeople have phoned you and asked if they might be able to help you um, with the marketing of that property. Um, and he said three people, three. Three salespeople in the Green Height, Albany area. Are you for real? How many agents out there? And the, the 
thing being is that out of those three in the last six months that phoned him, none of them, zero, nil, nada, have actually followed up again because they don't like the rejection. The rejection is just part of the process. Just get used to it. You've got to understand that every time somebody says no, you're a little bit closer to someone saying yes, but more so just because they say no today doesn't mean they'll say no next week or the week after or the month later. Stay in touch, create trust, create some empathy with them, create um, a bond with these people so they can see that you've got a compelling uh, sales ability, you've got enthusiasm, you're giving them good knowledgeable information and things like that. You know. It's so easy just to walk away from those no's and just, as I've said in previous um, videos, walk away and just go, oh, that was all too hard. Right? You can't expect business just to land in your lap all the time. So targeted prospecting allows you to choose your business, go after it, get, get used to that thrill of the hunt, the thrill of the chase, and get that business. It might not happen today or tomorrow. It might come in, in, a, in a week, 10 days, 20 days, 100 days from now. But you've got to understand the more of that that you put in your pipeline, the more you're going to get coming out in due course. So what you do today is going to affect your business in months to come. So don't procrastinate. Be brave enough to go out there and do some targeted prospecting. As I said, whether it's existing business that's there, whether it's new business, you know, people that aren't even on the market, you just get in touch with them. It's private sales or whatever. And if you're in, the, as I say, in those other industries, the same applies. Go out and actually ask the question. Be brave enough to expect a few no's, but be brave enough after that to go back and check on how they're doing again. Because it's the person that asks the second or third or fourth time for the business um, or makes those approaches that will actually get the business. Anyway, that's enough from me today. I'm David Seymour and that was the nitty gritty of selling. Love to hear from you if you have any questions, queries uh, or suggestions. Comment below.